Hello there, cardists, card magicians, magic fans, and fans of Chris. It's your favorite card reviewer here, Jonathan, aka Magic Peace Love, doing a review of all the uh, Orbit decks since uh, the last review I did. I think I did the first five, and uh, there have been six new decks out. There's three new additions, and so lots to cover here. If you haven't seen my previous review, you can check it out right uh, there. Uh, maybe there. For some reason I managed to collect all these decks of cards. I'm really not a collector. I try not to accumulate stuff, but I have been in Magic for 50 years, so I have acquired a certain number of decks of cards without trying. But really, I'm not a collector. So as you can see, we have uh, the first edition, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth edition, and then we have the seventh and the V7 parallels, the eighth and the V8 parallels, and finally the Aesop Rock edition. Badass cards we've got to review here. So uh, last time we did the first five. I did the review on the occasion. Stay. These are going to fall. I did the review on the occasion of this uh, fifth edition, which I really liked a lot. It was the first one. He went with this matte finish and went with color on the inside of the box, which looked really great. And uh, it was also the first one where he added this little uh, orange stripe here. So when you make a fan, you get that nice stripe in there. There we go. Let's see if we can get a decent fan to get that orange stripe along there so a lot of nice things he added with this deck added the color over here and uh, all of these uh, I pointed out had the number 23 on the top which is his number and the addition on the side this cool little logo on the bottom after the first it became this uh, sort of rocket ship logo and uh, inside of the flaps it says uh, the orbit deck and uh, little things on the on the uh, flaps there and uh, I believe this one yep we are orbit it says all the way on the inside on the bottom which is really nice as well so a lot of nice details on this one you should check out my review of the first five if you want to see what I have to say about each of these the first the second uh, these are a nice color matched pair I kind of like that the third one I really love that decadent uh, back design I call that the decadent edition <laughs> And uh, the fourth became a big hit for Chris. I saw them all over the place in cardistry videos, which was great. They're nice. They're black. Got the rocket ships around. Not my favorite design, but pretty nice. It's got a nice black design. These ones I really liked a lot. And now let's see what he's been up to the last few years. <clears throat> the last few years. Let me not tap my microphone. The last few years since my last review. Well, first of all, the sixth edition came out. This is pretty cool. Uh, he did a nice little thing here. This is says 23 on the top like the others. But uh, you'll notice he actually went with this different technology font of some kind. I don't know what that means, if that's got some other meaning besides just 23. Other than that, 6th edition, Orbit, most of this is following the same design cues as the others. You look under here, the Orbit deck, and now it's got this nice green on the inside. And in fact, if you look at the box, it says we are Orbit down there, and it's got some stars on the inside. So he did a nice thing with the box. looks pretty cool. And... Uh, if you'll notice, there's actually an alien and a spaceship, a flying saucer, actually, on the flap, which kind of mimics the flying saucer on the back. This is a pretty cool back design. And what you have here is a flying saucer that is kidnapping or uh, maybe borrowing a human in there, if you look real closely. My eyes aren't great, but I can see that. I assume that's Chris being taken off to the spaceship, which changed his life, of course, when that happened to him. This is also Chris inside the little circle there. So this one also has that nice uh, stripe over here, which bleeds to the edge. So when you get that fan, you get that nice little green stripe along the edge, which I always liked. And again, when you fan them, you get a nice stripe along there. So that's pretty cool in the back design. I do like this sort of trees. He's got the circle here with a sort of tree lines with stars in it and the flying saucer. A uh, nice design. I like the back. It's got a nice uh, kind of green. And if you look at the faces, as always, it's got the extra eight of spades in case you lose the eight of spades and the advertising card that just advertises the cards. And, uh, oh, by the way, I love the fact that everybody commented in the last video, but if you're of the opinion that my interpretation of these cards is not correct, you don't have to put that in the uh, chat for YouTube. So uh, the Jokers did a really nice, fun thing. I don't remember each of the other Jokers. He kept adding some stuff to it. This time, the Joker just uh, became an alien. This is uh, Orbit having become a, an alien because he actually has Persist and Endure tattooed on there and he has number 23 on his arm, much like our buddy Orbit, Chris. So that obviously is Chris. So there's your Jokers. And then the Ace, uh, nice job here. In this case, 
Uh, it might be hard to see on the camera, but this is the spaceman taking a selfie of the flying saucer, which is between the moon and the Earth. So that's pretty cool. I like that. I like that a lot. That's a very nice little addition to the Joker. And again, it's got the number 23 down at the bottom, which is Chris's number. And then once again, you have uh, the Jack is uh, Chris. And then the other three Jacks in this one now are, actually this was true in the last edition as well, I didn't mention that in my last review, but these are his team over here. So uh, the Jack of Spades is uh, Daniel Schneider, who is the designer, the brilliant designer of these cards. And then you also have uh, the Jack of Clubs is Nick Stumphauser, or Stumphauser, I'm not sure how he pronounces his name. He is a cinematographer who does, I think, all of the cinematography and filming for the Orbit. Dot com or orbit.af and uh, then the jack of hearts is sean o who's a very talented cardiste and also an amazing filmmaker you should uh, definitely follow him on instagram he does really cool videos and again the cool details in these if you look at the one with nick i think there actually are uh, some cameras kind of built into the silhouettes over here and i'm not sure what exactly is hidden in this one of daniel schneider i know the one for sean o actually says sean o across across his sash over here so that's how you can tell that's sean o and then uh, you've got the queens. Again, the queen is his wife, Holly. And then the other queens, I believe, have also, uh, on this one, I think they're all just standard queens. King of Hearts is his dad again. And uh, the other kings on this, I think, are all standard kings from the deck. So, again, nothing super special there. And the rest of the cards, you have these giant pips like he always has on these. I think it's the Arco font and the Arco stock, which is a little different than the bicycle if you're used to bicycles. But, yeah, overall, very nice deck of cards. I like the color. Uh, it's got a nice dark quality to it, but again, that nice shiny green stripe on there looks really nice when you fan these out or do anything with them like that. Obviously, for cardistry, anytime you're doing anything where you're spinning, those look great as well, but all of his cards look really nice. So I'm a fan of this deck, the 6th edition. Uh, very solid, uh, very cool, a nice addition to the uh, Orbit Parade. Here we go. I'll turn those the right way so you can see those, and I'll leave this uh, right over here. Boop. There's number 6. Uh, number seven. So the seventh, he actually did the parallel edition as well, which was pretty cool. So there's a seventh edition, and then there's a V7 parallel edition. And these are kind of 80s themed, obviously, if you've been in the 80s. And I lived through the 80s, so I remember the 80s quite well. Uh, I know he was inspired by Back to the Future. There's also a lot of Miami Vice going on in here, in this, and uh, pretty much every other music video that was on MTV when they first appeared had these kind of pastel colors. So he really went with those, which is nice. Uh, this is pretty cool. It's got the pink uh, inside and some pink over here and a pink ring. Other than that, the 23 you'll notice on this one is uh, like an LED, because that's kind of when uh, LEDs or LCDs first became, went really big into the culture. You know, before that you had standard clock faces. You had some LEDs before that, but they really became cheap and ubiquitous in the 80s, so it's a nice touch. And then on the parallel edition, instead of 23, you'll notice it's 32, because it's kind of like a parallel universe. Uh, another nice thing with these uh, is that this one, the normal V, uh, V, what is this, V7, 7th edition, has actually a nice little color rainbow on the bottom. So like all the other ones, it has that uh, rocket ship going in a spiral, but this one has a nice rainbow in the middle. Just a nice touch. You know, these are something sometimes described as bud vase features. I've seen named after the feature in the VW Bug when they reintroduced it, the VW Bug. It had a little vase where you could put a bud, like a rose in there, and people loved that. It had no, no functional utility at all. It was just something that people could love. So this is like a bud vase feature. It's just something that you see it and you go, oh, geez, look at that rainbow there. That's really cute. Hey, hey, who's that? I'm Ultimate Universe Magic Peace Love. Who? Well, I'm here to tell you all about things you don't know. You know Chris in your universe? Oh yeah, T-Bro and I are like that. T-Bro? T-Bro? Parallel universe? No? Yeah. Wow. Let me get my deck so I can tell you what you're missing about that rainbow. This rainbow is a tribute to the astronauts who lost their lives in the space shuttle accident of 1986. When Chris did this, he actually put the names of the astronauts inside the box. Really nice little tribute. And on the other one, the rainbow is on the inside of the box. But, so that's what it's for. It's a tribute to the astronauts who lost their lives in the Challenger disaster. Oh man, I remember that space shuttle Challenger. I was in college and blew up. <sighs> and then of course, right after that, through all the jokes, you know, what does NASA stand for? I need another... Don't. All right, bye Parallel Universe, Jonathan. Anyway, on the inside, what's cool with these is the inside of this is the outside of the Parallel Editions. 
and the parallel has is the inside is this, which is nice. So if you look at the box, you've got, uh, I'm not sure what these designs are. Oh, there's some uh, 3D glasses on this side, and that is some kind of a Sputnik or space uh, satellite. Those are 3D glasses, which is pretty funny. But then the inside of this is, in fact, the outside of this box turned inside out. So we just printed them both and published them that way, which is really nice. Nice touch. It says we are orbit all the way on the bottom there. So I love that touch that these are mirrors. This deck, uh, I'm sort of not super in love with it. I still love the circle, though. That's kind of, again, what I love about all of these decks, all the orbit decks, is that circle is just a very nice striking design principle for the whole deck. So and then you have... Uh, you know, the pink, they don't fan, they don't give you anything special when you fan them, because there's none of that uh, other stuff like the one on here, these stripes there. But nice deck, very solid. I don't think there's too much extra here. There's the extra eight of spades and that card. Uh, the Jokers, hilarious. You'll notice on the Jokers now, the astronaut is accompanied by a dog. Cute little dog with a flag, the number 23. And if you look at these really closely with good eyes, you might see other details in here as well. I needed to use a loop because I'm not as young as I was when those editions came out. But uh, yeah, I love the fact that there's a dog on the Jokers here. And then also uh, now you'll notice that he's, uh, I guess he's on the moon, but he's actually looking at uh, Saturn, the rings of Saturn with the dog on his shoulder. And that's really nice that he gets to be with his dog. Kind of reminds me of Tintin or Tintin when he traveled with uh, his dog Snowy or Milou in, in French. And so that's a nice touch right there. I, I dig that. And once again, the Jack of Diamonds is our fearless leader, Chris, Chris AF. And uh, the other Jacks are his team. Queen of Diamonds is his wife, Holly. He has added a few more cards here. So the Queen of Clubs is actually an old family friend. It was like a second mom to him. She was the mother of a close friend of his as a kid growing up. So I can't remember her name, but that's who that is. And the Queen of Clubs is, and the, rather the King of Clubs is her husband. So that's nice that he added those guys on there. And then uh, the other queens are stock queens. The King of Diamonds is a stock king. King of Hearts is his dad once again, which is lovely. These are all standard now in all decks going forward. And he also added one more card, the King of Spades. This is our pal John Bodine, who is a very talented magician and kind of a shaman figure and to a lot of people and a mentor to Chris. Very interesting guy. And so he added John Bodine. And uh, in fact, John Bodine's favorite card is the Six of Spades. And so there's actually a Six of Spades right there in his sash. If you look at that, you should be able to see that as well. And that's also good for a reveal card. If you force the six of spades, and then you say, I got your card. Boom. Is that it? No. Oh, I'm sorry. The king got it. If you look in his sash, he's got the six of spades. I don't know that it's a great trick, but it's something that's built into here. And it's nice that John has a card in the orbit deck. Nice thing with this deck is that these are not actually black. These are dark purple. It's a very dark purple color. And this is sort of a washed pinkish red. So the colors are washed. It's not as great for function as far as when you use them. I mean, it doesn't, these ones have good contrast more than those ones, I would say. But I kind of dig the fact that the ink on this is a dark, dark purple as opposed to a black. Other than that, I think uh, they're pretty much the same as the other Orbit decks. But uh, again, a nice kind of cool design. And while we're at it, we may as well also mention that this deck is uh, one way. In fact, all the Orbit decks from the fourth edition and maybe even the earlier ones are all one way, which is kind of cool. This one is not a big deal. It's just it's printed off registration, which is kind of designed to look like the 80s, that quality. That was deliberate, but it also gives it the one way quality. And uh, these are also uh, an old Arco pip that he used, which gives them kind of a little bit more of a jagged feel to the pips if you look at them. And that is deliberate. They kind of have like an 80s quality control issue to them, which is kind of neat. It gives it that whole thing is a little bit off registration. These are also marked, which is something I don't normally talk about on YouTube videos, but I have to assume anyone watching this is either a magician or somebody who knows about the Orbit decks. So it's probably not a big deal. Uh, if you look at them, they're marked up in the corners over here. In the stars, so this one actually has an 8 and an H, which is for 8 of hearts. This one has an 8 and an S, which is for the 8 of spades. And uh, in fact, I'll hold that up so you can kind of see where the 8 and the S is. Right up in the corner, right over here. And this one here is the 8 of spades. Right up in the corner over there. So these are all marked. And you can kind of see it if you uh, look through them like this. And you riffle them, you can kind of see the stars jumping around a little bit, which is uh, pretty cool too. So... If you want a nice Mark deck, I think these are still available on his site, and they're pretty cool. It's got the pink 
circle and the orbit triangle and they're marked and they're just kind of a fun deck of cards in general. But I'm gonna leave these out because then we also have the parallel edition. Again, these are not so much beautiful as an edition. They're just very retro kind of 80s edition. Although I like that anytime he takes the orbit circle and puts them on something else, they become orbits, you know, even though they're an 80s style, it's still distinctly an orbit deck because of that circle, which is just great. I mean, good job, Chris. I love that circle. And uh, so these ones, again, I don't think anything new specifically with the box, particularly, again, the 32 in this case, rather than 23. And again, the inside of this box is the outside of this. It's this box turned inside out. So if you look in there, you can see a pink circle. You probably can't see that there. And it says, uh, oh, in fact, in this case, it doesn't say we are orbit on the bottom, which is kind of disappointing. But it does have that rainbow uh, rocket ship on the inside on the bottom, the one from the bottom of here. So... That's a very nice, just nice designs. And in fact, the uh, 3D glasses and the little Sputnik are on the inside of this one, of course. And on the outside, it has ah, 3D glasses and a Sputnik as well, but on the this sort of 80s uh, light blue neon thing. And again, these cards are the same, same as the other ones. Although in this one, the astronaut's gone. And now we just have the dog, which is a really nice touch. The dog is just riding a bicycle. It looks very almost like, you know, gay 90s. Not gay and like homosexual, but gay in like the gay 90s, the 1890s, because it's got that kind of quality of the bicycle riding the bike to me. I don't know. Maybe that's just me projecting. But I do like the fact that the astronaut's gone. It's just the dog. And then if you look at the Ace of Spades, once again, the astronaut's not gone and you just have the dog <laughs> with his uh, NASA helmet in this case. And of course, Persist and Endure, the logo for Chris Brown, and uh, Orbit AF, as he calls it now. So again, kind of uh, not my favorite back design, although it does have some uh, some of those stripings. So when you do this, you get like, nice patterns in here. To me, it's kind of a busy, cluttered design, but I really admire that this is a parallel deck for this one and the fact that it's turned inside out and it's got that 80s theme. Again, he was very inspired by Back to the Future with these cards, which interestingly also became the theme of his latest... Uh, Orbit Jam was all kind of around a Back to the Future kind of theme, which is pretty cool. But uh, there you have it. So that is the 7th edition and the 7th edition parallels. So now we get to the 8th edition. This is the newest edition that's out right now. So we have the V8 and the V8 parallels. There's also a parallel edition. The parallels are sold out, as far as I know, at least from Chris's uh, site from Orbit AF. You can certainly check and see if you can find them elsewhere. I like the parallels quite a lot as well, but let's look at the uh, first at the regular V8, or the regular 8th edition. Now, in this case, he actually replaced the spaceships with Back to the Future DeLoreans on the bottom. So in this case, now there's a Mars rover, because I guess he got inspired by the Mars rover on Mars, landing a helicopter on Mars, and all the other cool stuff we've done. So there's actually now a Mars rover riding around in that circle there. And then you have the same 8th edition, you got the same 23, and uh, the design itself is uh, pretty cool. Right, let's take a look at the second at the box. So the box is a black box, and uh, I actually don't know what it says inside of there. Let me see if I can figure it out and I'll let you know. All right, so the inside here, it says, Miss you, love you always, Grandma Chris. So I guess a nice little tribute to his grandmother on the inside of the box here, which is quite nice. I don't need the glasses, really. So uh, it's also got uh, some nice uh, little Mars rover, I guess, on the flap here. And on this side, I don't know what that is. Maybe that's the Earth scene from above. So nice little things on the flaps, little details. Stars on the inside, black interior. Uh, so these cards are pretty cool. So the first thing I noticed with these is they've got a Mars rover on the bottom and top with some people. I got a pretty good camera there, so I'll just hold that up and see if you can see the people and the Mars rover on the bottom. I'll try to zoom in on that for you. And uh, besides that, it's also got all these stars around here. Now in the uh, description of this, it does say this is a marked deck, which I thought was kind of interesting. So I said, oh, let me check. And of course, the first way you check for a marked deck is to uh, do that kind of thing and see if they're marked. And when, when, I did, just, yeah, when I did that, I discovered that the stars in here, which aren't actually stars, it turns out, they're uh, rocks and uh, meteors. They actually bounce all over the place. <laughs> all over the place. So I'm like, well, that's not very helpful. I can't see what the pattern is in those. And so I was like, is this some kind of complex pattern? And I uh, hit up Chris and I said, I don't know what's going on. But the fact that they're all bouncing around means that every back is different, which is kind of a, a 
key, you know, because a normal deck of cards, you print, the faces are all different, but the backs are all the same. So it's cheaper to print a regular deck of cards than a marked card deck of cards, because all the backs have to be individually printed separately, because each one is marked. That's kind of how marked decks work. So anyway, he said, ah, it's just down there in the lower corner down here. And I was like, oh, really? So then I did the old riffle there in the lower corner, and I couldn't see a thing until I put on my glasses, because even though my eyes are not bad, I'm not 22 anymore. And then when I put them on, I discovered that in that lower corner down there is actually a number in suit. I don't normally talk about stuff like this on uh, YouTube, but I assume everyone watching this is going to have read the description where he says that. And it's actually down there in the corner, and this will not show up on camera probably, but it is down there. And so uh, this is a two of spades, and there's a two and a spade down there. I can't even see these reliably with glasses. I sort of can. Without glasses, not at all. And I can see the Mars rover, and I can kind of see the little people there, although they're really small. And so I consider this a marked deck for very young people with very good eyes, or just more like a cosmetically marked deck, but not really that usable. That said, I thought it was kind of interesting all these stars were jumping around. I wasn't quite sure what that had to do with anything. Uh, but then I discovered that if you have this in new deck order, suddenly it makes sense. They actually go whoosh in a circle and then they reverse directions. Or if you do what I did and put them in ace through king order, ace through king, ace through king, ace through king, which I'm slightly off of that, but then you'll notice now, if you can see that, and if you can't, I'll make sure I get a good shot of it. They're just shooting around, which is pretty cool. So I love that. This is actually a flip book and these things are spinning around. So suddenly this whole design makes sense that it's almost like this is a portal in a rock and we're seeing through that portal and the stars are flying around. That's just badass. And these are still available and I, you should get a deck of these just so you can play with the flip book thing. And just, that's just so much fun to watch them. <laughs> and of course, if you put them in king through ace order, then they go the other right way. <laughs> but if it's in new deck order, which is ace through king, ace through king, then king through ace, king through ace, then you get them going like this and right at the midpoint, they suddenly are going like that. But anyway, so that's what's going on. This is actually a flip book with these things going around that ring, which is fantastic. And they're marked down here in the corners. The markings I consider <laughs> somewhat marginal, but that could just be that I'm old. Uh, other than that, you still have the extra eight of spades and the uh, advertising card. And then the Joker now, you've got a Mars lander, which is nice. You know, so the whole thing is a little tribute to, to uh, the Mars landing. I say the fact that you've got the Mars landers on the back with the little people is pretty cool. And so you've got those Mars landers. And then uh, right now you've got the uh, ace is, uh, he's actually standing on the Mars, I guess. And there's a little geodesic dome there, which I kind of dig because I love Buckminster Fuller and geodesic domes. So we've got the ace, which does have a number 23 in the background, which I only discovered when I looked at this thing with the loop, which isn't actually a loop. It's just a really good magnifier. So other than the ace, uh, we also have a couple of new cards that have been added to the deck. The Queen of Hearts is his, sis, uh, is his mother. Nice addition there. And I like that she's got a sword, very fierce. Queen of Spades is his sister, who also has a sword. So nice additions to the uh, normal, usual suspects, uh, along with all the other cards here. And other than that, it's uh, the standard uh, Orbit deck now, or Arco deck. But uh, yeah, I am really fond of these, especially once I discovered that the stars are actually a flip book. It's pretty cool. If somebody thinks they might be a marked deck and does this, you're screwed because they're going to see those stars jumping all over and they're going to think, think there's some kind of binary code in the layout of the stars, which there isn't. But just the fact that you can do this and <laughs> get those things spinning around inside of this portal around this uh, Stargate Zero O here for orbit is just awesome. So this is a really cool deck of cards. Kind of fell in love with these. It took me a while to figure out all the cool things about them. And uh, I say the markings are down there. Good luck finding them. <laughs> so that is the uh, V8. And then there's the Parallel Edition, which is also sold out on his uh, uh, website, I believe. You might still be able to find them elsewhere. Nice thing they did just with the box. All the others have this. This is actually an embossed uh, thing on the bottom here. It's tactile. It's embossed. Really cool. Again, it's just the version of this, but I don't know why the, he embossed it, but it looks great. It's another little bud vase feature, you know, a little thing that you just kind of, ooh, that's nice. Little pop, you know. And then these are cool, cool design. And again, with the box, 
you have uh, somewhat of this, the theme being reversed. So this one on the inside is the same as this one on the outside. They're not actually identical the way those ones were, the previous ones were. But uh, you at least have that brown theme, which is like what this is, the background. This one has that black starry theme, which is sort of what this one is. So they are paralleling each other. Again, this one says 32 on it because it's the parallel edition versus 23. It's the inverse. And it says we are orbit. I don't think there's anything else in there. And then you've got these, uh, this, uh, some kind of satellite that looks like a spider there. And here you have uh, the Earth or maybe Mars. I guess if I look at this with this, I can tell you. Uh, it's just a pattern. I don't know what that design is exactly. This is a satellite, but it looks like a spider. Very cool. And uh, then these are actually a really nice deck, too. I just like the, the back design. It's very clean and simple. It's got these two little brown dots here, and uh, the interior is kind of a little bit of a bluish uh, texture in there, I think, compared to this. I don't know exactly. I can't say. And again, you've got the eight and the, these. And now this one is the first Joker that I found that does not have the number 23 on it, at least as far as I could find. But there's a lot of nice detail that I couldn't tell personally on this until I looked at it under a magnifying glass. Like their, uh, their helmets are actually the front facing is purple, which is really cool. So there's purple in there. There's some green inside uh, one of these things this guy has. There's some little blue things shooting off. All that is really hard to see without uh, good eyes or glasses or whatever. But uh, they're in there. Just nice details in the color that makes this a really cool image. And these just these, you know spaceman on Mars working with the rover. I'm quite, quite fond of that as a Joker as well. And so I really like the back design on these. That's kind of getting back to a more simple design that I like. And it's got this thing that uh, when you make a fan, let me do that this way for you, you get those nice dots there that, are, that show up really nicely, just like that. And what's cool with the parallel edition, if you shake like this, the dots actually disappear, which is weird. I don't, you know, kind of strange, but anyway. Uh, so uh, I like the fact that it has those little dots there. It's just a little accent that just gives you really nice fans and spreads and stuff like that. Hey, perfect. Uh, other than that, oh yeah, and the ace on this one, really fun. Uh, it's kind of cool because the arm, I noticed, this is similar to the other one with the 23 in the background. This one on his arm, he's got a little stripe that looks like it could be striped from American flag, but also looks a little bit like Where's Waldo, which is... Maybe accidental, maybe not, I don't know. But that's pretty cool that the Joker has that. I think the rest of these are all the same as the other ones. I don't think anything changed from there. But again, I really like this back design, but I'm a bit of a purist. I kind of like the simpler back designs in general. Although these ones with the uh, flip book, that's just a winner. And these are still available. I definitely recommend you pick up a set of those if you want to be able to play with those. These, if you can get them, it's just a beautiful back design. I think it's just a pretty classy looking set of deck of cards. So I'm very fond of these as well. But, you know, as I've said, I like all of these because I just like this as a design. I think Chris just did a great job with these. And there may be more details in here that I can't see. Actually, I think the little pattern in here is the same as the pattern on these logo on the flap there, which is pretty cool. So that is all of the uh, additions so far, at least the V1 through v eight and all the parallel additions like so. And they are, uh, as I say, they're all really nice, and I'm quite fond of uh, the whole set of them. And we put these in order. There we go. Sixth edition, seventh, and the seven parallels. There we go. And the eighth. There we go. So you can kind of see those all in order. Very nice. Now, there is one other one, though, and Chris was kind enough to send me one of these. This is the uh, Aesop Rock edition. He made this with hip-hop artist Aesop Rock. I'm not cool enough to know who that is, but now I know who it is because... Yeah, they made this deck, and this is just an insane deck of cards. <laughs> I love it. I, it's just, uh, the design is really cool. It says Orbit, but it also says Aesop Rock across here, three ways. These are designed by Justin Coro Kaufman. I guess that is the artist and designer who did all this cool stuff on here. Uh, if you look at this one, I have no idea what any of this means, but it's a very cool image. <laughs> the colors... It's got fire and it looks like demons and all kinds of other cool things. Again, it says 23 on there. It says Aesop Rock Edition on the side. So I don't think this is officially a, an Orbit V edition, but it's its own standalone edition. But these are just amazing. And they're also sold out at the Aesop Rock site. And I don't think Chris has any either, but you might be able to find some still elsewhere. And uh, so this one on the uh, flaps, you've got a skull here. And uh, what is this? 
maybe a human heart ripped out of somebody's body. I don't know what that is, but it's really cool. <laughs> nice logos. The interior has all kinds of cool patterns. It still says We Are Orbit on the bottom. And uh, it says, or the Orbit deck and uh, Aesop Rock wins, which I guess is his uh, Instagram. And uh, lots of other little illustrations on the inside there that you might or might not be able to see depending on the lighting. But it's just a cool box. A lot of nice stuff. The back design, <laughs> it's just, I don't even know what to say about this. It's just such a cool design. It's got a very kind of, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. because it's, it's a digital art look, but it's kind of reminiscent of a lot of fantasy art and maybe bad drug trip art or uh, <laughs> a good DMT trip art. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, it's a very cool back design. You can decide what you think it is or what it is. It's got the stripe that runs along the edge again, but in this case, it's actually flames which is nice. So when you fan these, you get that nice uh, stripe all along here uh, made out of the flames. The uh, circle itself, the O, has kind of ringed by multiple colors. Looks almost like it might come to life if you use 3D glasses with it because of the patterning of the red and blue. Maybe I should try that at some point. That might be another hidden feature. If you've got 3D glasses, you've got a set of these, check it out. Other than that, with the back design. So then the Jokers... You got three jokers, which are just basically three cards that are bleed all the way to the edge. And uh, what's cool about these is these actually go together to make a single image like that, which is pretty cool. So you've got a nice big image, almost like a poster. Again, it's a, a deer and a giant fireball in the sky shooting down into a forest and creating a skull. I don't know what that is, but that's mirrored on the back. So that is what's on the back. There's a deer here shooting with the fireball, looking at the skull. And uh, on the back, there's something rising out of fluid or out of a portal, maybe. I uh, don't know what it is. Anyway, so they're very cool. This is the Jokers on these, these three. <laughs> and then uh, you do still have the advertising card, which is nice. You don't have the extra eight of spades because this isn't really uh, targeted to magicians who are prone to losing cards. So that's probably why. Uh, the Ace of Spades is very nice. Be Not Afraid, aesoprock.com and uh, orbita.af. I assume Be Not Afraid must be an Aesop Rock slogan or tagline. And if you're watching this, you're probably like, you idiot, you old man, whatever. Anyway, so yeah, so I don't know who Aesop Rock is. I only know Aesop Rock now because of Chris. So Chris made me a new fan of Aesop Rock just for his cards, and I'll have to check out his music as well. But that is a pretty cool ace. I assume that's an Aesop Rock logo. I assume the skull, actually, because the skull reappears, you know, throughout here and on the back as well. It must be related to Aesop Rock. Uh, other than that, this is pretty much the standard Orbit deck. So it's, again, the, uh, the queens and kings are all various people, and so are the jacks. And the jack is Chris. So Chris managed to sneak himself into Aesop Rock's deck and his wife and all the rest. So that is the deck of cards. That is the Aesop Rocks. Maybe my favorite orbit deck ever just because the back design is so trippy but it's still orbit deck it's still got that circle which they all have so i love that such a blast really nice deck of cards uh thank you to chris for sending these along and great job with these new ones again i have no affiliation with chris except that he's an old friend of mine so i'm not prone to be mean but i wouldn't be anyway be not afraid and all of his cards here it always says uh the the deeper you gaze into the abyss, the harder it is to look back. So that's his slogan up here. Persistent and endures his slogan, but in this case it says, Be Not Afraid, which I assume is the Aesop Rock slogan. Uh, again, if you can get these, really badass deck of cards. <laughs> I like them a lot. And I say overall, I legitimately think the Orbit decks are my favorite series of decks. Just that back design, everything with the, uh, you know, this cool back design. You have the whole set of them here, and so... Here you go. So that's my review of the Orbit decks, the whole line of them, including the Aesop Rock. Let me know what you think. Definitely uh, feel free to comment in the comments and uh, launch your abuse or your congratulations or anything. And uh, if you want some of these, uh, check out Chris at orbit.af or uh, wherever your finer decks of cards are sold. See you later. Peace out.